I think there's probably a specific answer, and I probably think there's a big picture answer as well. You know, heading into uh, you know this game or any rivalry game, you, you know it's going to be a dog fight. And uh, you know, something I heard from Coach Chris Ball at Oregon, which I thought was awesome, was he said the the best best thing to bring into any fight is a reason. And you know, I remember hearing from my dad growing up. You know, you want to win any fight, you got to swing first. You got to swing hard. And uh, at the end of the day, you got to keep swinging. And then I think that's what our kids did. And <laughs> there's been so many damn close calls over the past two years. I mean, nine one-score losses to them in overtime. And, you know, you're looking for that breakthrough moment when, as we mentioned before, you keep swinging at the boulder. And you don't know if it's going to be the first swing or the 10th or the 100th, but eventually it's going to split. And, you know, I think there was probably a little bit of belief when it got to 27-17 that when Lorenzo scored to make it, you know, 27-24, you kind of felt, you know, that the tide and the momentum was turning a little bit. So it was a very word salad uh, explanation to say, I think when Lorenzo scored and we got the three and out, I think that was when you could kind of feel the momentum shift a little bit. You think it was all just, you know, the, the flow of the game like you're describing, or was there anything set on the sideline or during a, a break in the action or anything like that? No, I, th I think, you know, that's really the culture that we're trying to build here, you know. You know, say 60 minutes or as long as it takes. And, uh, you know, for our coaches, we're going to coach up to and through the game. And, you know, the keys to us winning are how well we prepare, how hard we play, which I thought we did. But but lastly, it's been our level of execution. And I thought, you know, we, we saw that. And there were things that we did throughout the course of the game where we're going to look at as coaches tomorrow and wonder what the hell happened. You know, getting some balls thrown over our head, obviously the fake punt, you know, not being able to convert second and one, third and one, fourth and one. You know, those are things that, you know, you really kind of get pissed off about and scratch your head a little bit. But, you know, ultimately we, we did what a, a burgeoning and program that's building off of the right foundation does. It kept, kept fighting and found a way to win. So, uh, obviously, your quarterback situation has changed. It's been like a roller coaster this it's season. It's big. So, <laughs> having said that, what, what can you say about Undercuffler and the way he just went, just just in crunch time, just went off? I think he had a good week of preparation. And, uh, going into the week, we said to defense, we want you to, if we give up 14 or less and we create two turnovers, offense, we need to score one more than they give up and no turnovers and we got to win a hidden yardage battle. So obviously all of those things didn't happen, but I think the key thing is you know, we didn't turn the ball over and give him a bunch of short fields uh, outside, of, outside of the fake punt. And I think Jeff had a good week of practice. He executed well within the system. I mean, we went on first and second down primarily to 12 personnel, which we hadn't done. I don't know if I've ever done like UConn maybe, uh, just because we wanted to set some edges and try to get the run game going. And then the last drive, we went back to what we do, which was 11 personnel to score. Uh, but you asked me about Jeff. I, I thought Jeff made good decisions in the run game in terms of RPOs and getting the ball out. Uh, was fairly accurate and threw the ball with confidence. Uh, you know, a couple reads that he missed. And then <laughs> the last thing in the world that you would expect, because he runs like me, and that ain't a compliment, is for him to run that damn ball in on the last. It was a triple option, essentially. Give to Lorenzo, pull and throw to TJ in the flat. And then they double team TJ, and no one, no one covered Jeff. So he just ran the damn thing in. So, I mean, he has, I mean, that's just total improvising. No, uh, he, that's his pitch key. Well, you say the pitch key. You're not, I mean, it's triple option concept. So the, the end bent, so he pulled it. Then you go to throw the ball to TJ. And if the guy covering TJ attacks you, you throw it to TJ. If the guy covering TJ covers TJ, then you run it in. And that's what happened. And obviously there's the plan was to, for them, I mean, we were crack locking. And to, the plan was to throw it to TJ, but they double covered him and ran it in. That is that is the Alanis Moore said ironic level stuff right there. I mean, truly. Um, you, you mentioned Lingard earlier. For him to break off that chunk touchdown and, like you said, ignite that belief. What, what was that moment like? Great for him because he had been bottled up, you know, for for most parts of the years. We were struggling to kind of get our O line <coughs> situated. And the thing I told him just before we left the locker room, I said, I need you to run angry tonight. And it, and it looked like he ran angry. 
and on that last run, I mean, he, I mean, essentially he was probably got contacted about the eight or the nine, and you know, really covered the ball up well and carried two guys in the end. So I thought I thought Lorenzo ran angry today, which was good. You mentioned two two receivers really producing. Um, what did you see from those guys tonight? I thought we had some good stuff dialed up. You know, quick game, intermediate, some max protect shots down the field. Uh, I thought they did a good job with the pre precision of their routes. Uh, I thought they caught the ball well. I don't know that we had many drops. And they, they really did a good job with, uh, uh, we call it yak, yet yards after completion. Yeah, I thought that was good yak. Um, hey, the, the way this game went, Kent State still had the ball at the end. Uh, for your guys, back-to-back -back -back sacks to close it, how, how nice was that? Yeah, I mean, I, dumb, I mean, Jeff spiked it, but. We'll, we'll correct that tomorrow. We'll have some corrective discipline with that tomorrow. But yeah, I mean, I've been, man, it's funny you say that. I was thinking, uh, Coach Richardson and I were together at UConn and, uh, Terry! So, uh, no, so we were to get, literally driving in today in the, uh, 09 season, we played West Virginia, scored on a long touchdown. And Noel Devon ripped off a like an 80-yard touchdown with a minute left to play, and then it, it, at Rutgers at home, we scored with like 30 seconds left, and then they threw a. And I don't know why I was thinking about that today, but like after the fact, I'm standing on the side. I'm like, man, I hope I was that wasn't like some kind of odd premonition of what the hell is going to happen here. So yeah, I because we've been we've been burned by that that type of stuff before. So. Yeah, when it was 25 seconds left and the ball on the minus 40, I'm thinking, man, no, no, like Sports Center, like Sickos Committee, like highlight stuff that's gonna like jam us up here. Um, big picture, I mean, what does this mean to, to this rivalry game to, to get a win um, in this specific series for you and your program? Yeah. Well, we we obviously we meet every Sunday in uh. After the after the uh, Bowling Green game, you know, review that and kind of start looking forward to this game. And I asked all the kids in the room, raise your hand if you've won the wagon wheel game. And not one hand went up. You know, me, Coach Faree from our last time here, and Coach Sobel and Coach so Soffold, who are our strength coaches who came from Kent. So no one in the room knew the uh, – Know the feeling of winning that game. So one, it's huge because you know I'm in a, I'm in the hotel today in uh, the, the conference room watching tape, and some random comes in and put, he said, "You want the coaches?" I said, "Yes, sir." He said, "You know this is a Super Bowl tonight." <laughs> I said, "Yeah, I'm I'm well aware." So components of a great rivalry: proximity, parallels in recruiting, and passion. And obviously, this this is a game that means a lot to a lot of people, starting with our president and our administration. You know, hopefully our fan base as we continue to build here, and most importantly, our, our damn players is, you know. A lot of us came here on faith, right? And f f the definition of faith is belief in what you cannot see. And I had one here in the past as an assistant, and I'm not saying it was a leap of faith to take this job, but there were certainly other opportunities bigger schools for a lot more money and there's just something that about this place that I knew I knew we can I knew we could win here and you know it didn't happen right away we went from being non-competitive to pretty damn competitive and now you're looking for that breakthrough moment and I guess very it, a lot of validate it, it's very validating in a, in a lot of ways to everything that we're building here my personal decision and obviously uh, the kids who decided to join us here in the in the past two years and, um, I mean it, it has been a tough season though because I mean we talked about the quarterback yeah. roller coaster the you know some some close losses some not so close losses but here you are like what does it say about your guys in the locker room to to, to keep that buy-in to this point and have it translate. Because they know the process works. You know, I mean, it didn't, it, you know, what's the saying? Success is never final. Failure is never fatal. And it'd be different if we were coming in here every week and obviously, you know, Northern beat our ass and, you know, Bowling Green to a certain extent. But you're also, you know, three points away from Temple. 
a field goal away from a Big Ten team and then three points from Buffalo and one more from Central Michigan. And we're sitting here, you know, five and whatever. So, I mean, it's, it's – and I know you are what your record says you are, but – we need, we needed a mo we needed a moment like this that that takes all of the stuff that's subjective and we're building and we're becoming competitive and we're heading in the right direction and then you, you come in. and then to finally you know put a nail in a coffin and finish it i mean that that to me like another great great validation for our, for our young men uh, coach when you know that fourth down your team makes a play clock it's over you see your players sprinting over to the wagon. Yeah. As a coach, what, what are you feeling in that moment? When does that hit you that you know you guys are bringing home that wagon wheel? And one of the one of the marks that you wanted to hit as a coach here, one of the first ones, is hit. Just what's that feeling seeing your team celebrate? You know, as you get older in this thing, this is year twenty six for me. It's unfortunate, and I think you heard, you know, Dabo kind of talk about it this week that the the wins are a relief and the, and the losses are gut wrenching. You know what I mean? So the first thing I did is walked over and shook our president's hand, and cause I know how much it meant to him. But like to look look down there and see our guys snatching up that wheel and taking it over to the band, it you know it's like I mean I have three of my own, and my oldest boy, I was there when he they clinched the president's athletic conference championship at Grove City and lifted up the trophy and they're going to the playoffs and the pride and happiness and exhilaration I felt for my own son and his team. You know, I have 110, you know, other kids that I feel that, that, are, that are my kids too. And so the feeling that you have for your own is a feeling that you have for these guys because uh, I hope they could tell you that I, I invest as much in them, you know, as people as, as we do for players. So it felt, it felt like watching 110 of my own kids running down and celebrating one of life's great successes, which is to win a rivalry game. Now, when, you know, you mentioned that someone mentioned to you that this is your Super Bowl. Yeah, so I'm right park random in the freaking <laughs> hotel. How, uh, how do you take, for, from this point on, take this team from this is our Super Bowl to we expect to win this game and we expect to, to win the Mackeys? Yeah, we have, we have a Kent State period every single day that we practice. Spring ball, fall camp. Whatever the game it is, there's one period of day that's devoted to this. And uh, you can't say you prepare differently because the, the inference there then is that game's more important than all the others, which it's not. Every game is important. This was important because it was our next game. But at the end of the day, there's a little more juice. There's a little more something. And, 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 it, and it, should show, it should show that way. Uh, and when we break it down at the end of that period, we use two words, our wheel. And that's what I want them to believe, that, that this is our wheel. And... You know, we finally got it back. Now, earlier in the year, you guys had, you know, trying to figure out who your kicker is. <coughs> Owen Wiley had a good game today. Hits a field goal, nailed all those extra points. How does that feel from going through a few weeks ago where you guys were trying to figure out who that kicker is to Owen having a great game? It's a friggin' relief because I'm sick of having every week of practice be a friggin' uh, you know, a competition to find out who's going to kick the ball. So to me, someone grabbed the job and separate himself, which, and honestly, it was an open competition again this week. He had the best week, and you know, hopefully he could keep putting them through the uprights so we don't have to, you know, continue to go through this. So, yeah, it was great to have someone go in there and make all the kicks. And when we do our keys to victory on Friday, uh, Coach Tucker's slide went up, and the first one was make all of our kicks. So goal number one for special teams we met. Coach, you've been in all the close games this year. Was there any doubt that like the goal was to win? It, like goal was to win it at the end, and like go for it fourth. Was it situational still, playing the overtime or anything like that? Oh, you mean like the last drive? You know, I, I don't. Uh, I, I kind of went back and was thinking about the Indiana game, like. We need a field goal to win that one. You know what I mean? And I look back in hindsight, it's always 20 20. You say, man, should we have like run something a little different to try to score a touchdown to end up? But, but no, like the thought process there was we were scoring a touchdown unless we absolutely had to kick the field goal. So yeah, that was, that was the thought process there to end it. No, don't want to extend it. No more, no more overtime games.